All right, friends, we're gonna be inspired by the book Swatch, and we're gonna do some color mixing. To start, we're gonna take this piece of paper we have and we're gonna fold it into thirds. The easiest way I think to show this to you is kind of silly. I pretend like I'm making a burrito where I wrap my paper kind of loosely like this, then I wrap the other way. Then I kind of adjust. So it's about into thirds. Then I lay my burrito, AKA my piece of paper, onto the table and crease it. Now mine isn't exact. When I look at that, the center one's a little bit bigger, but that's not a big deal. I'm gonna draw three jars and I just want to make sure that I have enough space, but it's fine if they're not equal. I'm gonna start by making an ellipse. An ellipse is a super skinny oval at the top of one of my thirds. You can see I'm leaving this two thirds empty for now. Then I'm gonna make a line that matches the bottom of my ellipse. Then I'm gonna connect that line with a little bump, bump, bump. If you wanna do a straight line, that's fine. I'm gonna make a diagonal line off of each side. Then I'm going to make a vertical line going down. I'm going to make a parallel vertical line going down. And I'm gonna curve the bottom. You can do this with your finger first for a little practice. If I curve it, my jar looks 3D. Jars are transparent, so if I want, I can make a line there to show how that ellipse actually goes all the way around. If I want to, I can make little lines along my jar. Those are like ridges, so when you open up your jar of color, then maybe um, your fingers could grip it a little better. If you wanna make a little glare, like light hitting it, that's fine. But we're gonna repeat that three times. I'll time lapse it so we can move a little more quickly. All right, now that I have three jars, I'm going to use three paint colors. And the tricky thing is, none of these jars are gonna match a paint color here. These are the primary colors, and I'm going to use this opportunity to mix the secondary colors. So to start with, I'm gonna grab some, I'll start by making orange, so yellow and red. When you use watercolor, you need to add water to wake up your paint. If you don't add water to your watercolor, it won't be liquidy. It'll just be kind of like a block. Don't worry too much if you go outside of the lines. We're gonna wind up cutting these out anyways. Now, when I mix orange, I want quite a bit of yellow and a little bit of red. And I kind of play it by ear, okay? So I'm starting to see a hint of orange. I'm gonna add, I think, a tiny bit more red. This is like a game where I go back and forth. If it looks too red, I add more yellow. If it looks too yellow, I add more red. That's looking orange to me. Now I'm going to go to my next secondary color, which is yellow and blue, which makes if you said green, you're right. So a lot of yellow and a little bit of blue. You can notice that I just kind of dipped into the blue and I'm gonna stir that up. And you can see I'm starting to get green. I can add a little more blue because to me that's kind of looking like a yellowish blue. When I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm having my paintbrush on its tiptoes never ever scooting on its bottom because nobody wants to go to the booty scooting ballet. So that's starting to look green. I kind of like that I can see a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the blue. When you're using watercolors, it really should be a thin layer of paint. Your paintbrush should never feel scratchy. Your paint should never feel sticky. It should be a nice, thin, liquid or watery consistency. My last color is purple, and I'll be honest with you, purple can be the toughest to get. So I take red and a little bit of blue, and lo and behold, it's starting to look purple. So I have mixed the three primary colors to make the three secondary colors in my jar. One for orange, one for green, one for purple. If you mix all of these colors together, I'm gonna to do it for you to show you how yucky it looks. You don't get a nice color. So you really wanna make sure that you're only mixing two of the colors at a time. So you can see that that makes kind of 
a gross color. <laughs> so you only wanna mix two of the primary colors at a time, not all of the primary colors. Now we're gonna let this dry and then next time I see you, we'll create a background. All right, friends, now I'm going to use spiral lines and chalk to create a background. A background is what's behind. Our jars will be in the foreground or the front of our art. You can see that the chalk is organized pretty well. I want you to keep it organized pretty well by taking only one piece of chalk out at a time. I'm going to start by making almost a circle. Now watch this. Instead of meeting back, I'm going to keep getting smaller and smaller. That's called a spiral. Sometimes when I use chalk, I like to trace over it with my finger to blend it. I'm gonna do a few spirals in that color, and then I'm gonna make sure that I put it back where I got it. All right, I'm done with that color, so I'm going to put it back right here. Even though that one is broken, I still want it to be nice and organized. I'm gonna grab another color and make more spiral lines. I wanna fill my paper with spirals. If there's another detail that you wanna add to your art, maybe you wanna make a little table or maybe there's a paintbrush sitting next to the jars. I'm not sure. You're welcome to add extra details, but I do want you to practice a spiral line in your art. I'm putting the yellow back, and now I'm going to make smaller ones in a different color. I can go above, below, next to, I can even overlap like I'm doing here. When I do that, the colors kind of blend together a bit, and sometimes that can be a good thing. So again, I can go back over and trace with my finger, or maybe I like that clean line that I had initially. That's your choice as the artist. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out my jars. I think it's easier to, to cut them apart like this, so I have less paper hanging all over the place. I'm trying my best to cut on the line I made or right outside that line. Sometimes it can be tricky to do though all the way around, and you'll notice that I'm really moving the paper. My right hand is in charge of the scissors because I'm right-handed, and my left hand is in charge of moving the paper around. So they both have their own jobs and they work as a team. This one's cut out. Now I'm gonna time-lapse you while I cut out these two, and then I'll show you what we will do. Now I'm ready to assemble my jars. If I want to, I can put them in a row. Maybe I'll make a stack like they're piled up where these two are there and this one is there. Maybe this one's falling over a little bit. Really, it's up to you. Maybe there are two high, one low. Before I glue, I kind of like to play around with different compositions. I think I want to make a stack. I think that's a fun idea. You don't need to with yours. You can do yours however you like. So I'm going to take them now that I like my composition or the way my paper's laid out, and I'm going to trace around the outside edge with glue and apply pressure. If I just put a glob of glue right there, this paper is gonna be flopping all over. So it's important that instead of putting the glue in the middle, you trace around the edges. If you want to put a little dot in the middle, that's fine. But the most important thing is that you trace around the outside edge with glue. My last one, and then I'm gonna flip my paper over and give it a back rub. All right and stick. Flipping my paper over, back rub to make sure it sticks really well, and then I'm gonna flip it over. I have a piece of artwork that tells people a lot about what I know. I know how to make a spiral line. I know how to blend chalk. I know how to keep chalk organized. I know how to use the three primary colors to mix secondary colors, and I know how to use geometric shapes in line to draw my own jars. So this little piece of art shows so much of what you've learned.